What's up Simonix and welcome to a new Ionic tutorial. Last year I read a lot about Tailwind, it got a lot of hype and I also saw some questions that requested to integrate Tailwind with Ionic. Before we get into this, um, Tailwind is basically a set of a lot of um, CSS utilities that can be directly applied inside your HTML or the template of your view. Ionic already comes with their own styling, which looks good on the web and mobile, but Tailwind also offers really great components that look amazing. It was kind of natural to try this out and integrate Tailwind with Ionic, which wasn't super easy, but we will go through the whole process of integrating Tailwind in our own Ionic application, but before that, we roll our new intro. Alright, so usually Tailwind is just a simple install, npm install Tailwind CSS. Of course, that's not going to work with our Ionic application because it uses the Angular build system uh, and Webpack and we need to make sure that everything works together. And that is actually kinda complicated uh, to do it by hand, but we're lucky there's a cool schematic to add Tailwind to an Angular project. So I'm in a completely new Ionic project and I simply run ng add ngx dash tailwind. Now, uh, once this or before this schematic actually executes, it will ask about using uh, CSS or SCSS. And as you know, in our Ionic application, we're using SCSS files. So we should pick that option um, if my internet connection finally gets this package from GitHub. There we go, we're gonna select SCSS and it will create and update a lot of files. So let's take a look at them. First of all, the Tailwind configuration is a configuration you find in all projects that are using Tailwind. Um, we will get back to this in the end for now, we can just keep it like it is. Then we got another Webpack configuration. Um, which adds the post CSS loader to our Angular Webpack build. Uh, we don't really need to care about this uh, too much. This is actually all that we need. Um, it just adds another step. And this step will be present within your Angular JSON. So you can see here, it also updates the package JSON and also the Angular JSON. And what you can find in here is the extra Webpack config step that is now using the Webpack config JS. So these are the steps I talked about to be um, a bit challenging if you do it by hand. So the schematic does everything for us. Uh, if we check out the package JSON, we now also see a few changes. Um, of course, we should somewhere see the uh, post CSS stuff. We see ngx tailwind and we should also uh, somewhere find, yeah, tailwind CSS, there it is. Um, is there any other change? Angular JSON, we looked at this. The variables, yeah. Within the variables, we already see three imports for the Tailwind scripts. Um, we will actually remove them from the variables. I feel like they shouldn't be in there. So let's continue. Uh, we're gonna open our global SCSS where we can find all the different Ionic imports. Of course, we wanna have the Ionic core imports, but if you're using uh, Tailwind inside your Ionic application, you don't really need all these utility things for padding, flow, text alignment. You can, or actually you should, or want to use Tailwind in those cases. So I will put in uh, the three imports of Tailwind in here. Uh, we're gonna keep the rest of these in here because they're quite fine. But if you run the application now, you will, um, let's give it a try. Uh, you will notice an error on the command line because um, post CSS picks up the paths to our uh, styling files within the node modules differently. And therefore the fix for this that I found after, well, a lot of trial and error is to just get rid of the dash in there. Um, hopefully this now really throws an error or hopefully didn't change so far. But that was definitely the fix for me. So remove the dash and interesting that here we got a single quote and here we got double quotes. Ionic, what's going on with your templates, huh? Anyway, um, we can let this uh, run through one time. Uh, I'm pretty sure it will throw an error 
uh, but we can for now already heat over to our home page uh, because Tailwind you're gonna just use it inside your HTML and if you're using Visual Studio Code I also recommend to open your settings uh, on a Mac you can do this with command uh, comma I think I'm not sure for Windows and search for CSS.validate um, can we just make this a bit smaller um, so I disable CSS and SCSS validation just because in the end we're writing a bit of CSS uh, with or using Tailwind syntax and this will throw up a lot of uh, errors that, that are actually not really errors. So I would recommend to disable this and also to install the Tailwind, uh, I think I use the Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. This makes it really easy to use Tailwind in your classes. So uh, highly recommend to also install this plugin. All right, uh, that's about the Visual Studio Code setup. Uh, we now see we got a lot of issues right here. Um, and yeah, well, whatever. Error in global, failed, build failed, uh, failed to find add ionic. So that's exactly what I mentioned in the beginning. Now, I've changed my global SCSS to remove all uh, of the leading dashes. No, that's actually not the dash. What's it called? I don't know. I've removed it. And we can finally use Tailwind. So I copied over um, just some basic Tailwind stuff from their page. Uh, and the cool thing is about Tailwind, it actually kind of just works if you put it into your page. So we're gonna use both Ionic in this page, uh, like color primary and call this one Ionic Tailwind. And then I'm gonna insert into the content a simple example uh, using background color, uh, whatever from their documentation. Now, if my IntelliSense would work, I could actually go over these and see yeah, great for demonstration. But if you install the extension for Tailwind, you should now exactly see what this expression means in CSS, which is highly helpful as uh, it's okay. At some point you might uh, get used to this, but in the beginning, it's kind of hard to figure out what all of this means. Um, this is hopefully fine. And I will bring up local hosts. So let's see if we can already see our application uh, not yet completely finished there we go so what I noticed um, after including tailwind um, the serve and the reload becomes a bit uh, slower I would say but now we can actually bring up the application uh, that's a big win we're gonna hit save in our home page and we're gonna check out what happens so in the background again it takes a bit longer than just Ionic Surf. Uh, and there we go. This is completely a Tailwind component. I think that is great. We just use the schematic and edit the HTML and it completely works. Now, I wanna demonstrate a few other things that you can do with Tailwind and how they actually uh, work with Ionic. So I will get rid of this and let's say below it, I'm gonna put three buttons. One button, an Ionic standard button, for example. Another button using uh, the Tailwind classes. And why is this not working? I really, it is enabled. Uh, I don't know why it's not. Yeah, I really hate it when it happens. Um, another button that uses the uh, styling for a Tailwind button. And then another button using classes, because if you still want to use classes uh, from CSS, you can actually do this. So within your homepage uh, as CSS file, you could now define for a button and a button blue, uh, what we used right here, the same classes using add apply. And we're going to hit save and we're going to reload. And once again, it might take a few seconds. And now if you haven't disabled CSS and SCSS uh, validation in here, you will get a lot of uh, red lights. So now we can see, um, actually the buttons already look pretty much like Ionic. I didn't expect that. Did Ionic pick up the, the Tailwind colors? I don't know. It really looks pretty close to Ionic. 
um, but usually the colors are not 100% ionic styling and we can fix this. If you uh, want to use the full uh, Tailwind colors like blue 500, uh, indigo 600, all these colors, you can just keep it like it is. But if you instead want to use the ionic colors that are defined right here, you can do a little trick uh, inside your Tailwind configuration. And I will just copy the whole object. And no, that wasn't the whole object. And put it in here. And then we extend the theme. So that is usually used to override specific Tailwind colors. Uh, or you could also define your own colors. And you can put in the complete uh, Ionic color definition in here. Success, warning, danger, whatever it might be. Um, is there a bracket too much? Uh, no, it's actually fine, I think. Should be fine. So if you change the Tailwind configuration, uh, it actually becomes a bit slower. And what we will now see as well is another problem. Because now we've basically overwritten the whole uh, styling of Tailwind. And we're not using uh, the predefined colors from Tailwind anymore. Which will give us a problem in these places where we use the default styling from Tailwind. So now instead of uh, using the Tailwind styling with text white, background blue, and all of this, um, let's actually see if we can see the issue. Um, yeah, we see the colors are not working anymore correctly. But what we can do right now is instead of using those values like background blue, we can use the new names we define inside our uh, global SCSS like text, light default, background, primary default, primary tint, all of these colors that you define inside your Tailwind configuration uh, right here. So now you can use uh, the Ionic colors as you're using them already perhaps and also use them within Tailwind. But it's really up to you if you want to use uh, the colors from Ionic uh, or from Tailwind. Uh, it's anyway a question of how you want to restyle uh, your application or if you're starting a new application just settle on one system. As a quick addition, of course, we would now also have to change our SCSS because otherwise the app wouldn't compile correctly anymore. Speaking of compiling your application, there's one thing I left out in the beginning inside the package JSON, and that is there's another step added to the scripts. This is necessary for the, um, yeah, we actually see a little issue here as well about the syntax, but right now, uh, didn't I change it? Uh, you're sure text light default exists? Yeah, perhaps you need to restart it if um, you change the Tailwind configuration. Um, if you want to build your Ionic application, you usually just run, um, can I clear this, Ionic build dash dash prod, or just without prod. But now you have to run uh, npm run build prod to run this exact script, which will set your uh, node environment to production. Uh, otherwise, the Tailwind configuration or the Tailwind in general isn't used correctly, your uh, files are not purged correctly, and the whole Tailwind integration wouldn't work correctly. So make sure that when you use Tailwind in your Ionic application, you always execute this new script if you want to uh, run a final build of your Ionic application. All right, that's it for the integration of Tailwind in our Ionic application. First of all, it works. Second, think about if you definitely need Tailwind or if you really need Tailwind and Ionic or if you just want to settle on one set of components because in the end, uh, your app otherwise might look kind of strange if you have some buttons from Tailwind, some from Ionic and it doesn't fit together. So also take care of the colors, either use Ionic in all the places or Tailwind in all the places and make sure they definitely match. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the like icon and if you want to dive more into Ionic, check out my Ionic Academy, which is my online school to help you with everything Ionic with 50 plus courses, projects, a great community, 
to help you come to speed with Ionic and learn about all the things that you can build. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time and happy coding, Simon. <laughs>